with the Louisville Olmsted Parks Conservancy. And today we're going to plant this tree in beautiful Willow Park. You're going to learn how to plant the right tree in the right place at the right time of year. Some things to consider are the species itself, how big it is, its benefit to the ecosystem around you, um, the container or the root ball of the tree itself and the steps to plant it, the tools that you'll need for the job, such as bolt cutters or a spade or a round point shovel. We'll figure out how big we need our hole to be and how deep, how to safely get this tree into the hole, how to fill, refill the hole, and then finally, how much mulch to add around your tree. We're going to take all these steps because we want this tree not just to survive, but to thrive in its new home. So we're going to plant the right tree in the right place at the right time of year. So the first step is figuring out where you're going to put your tree. You can think about aesthetics such as where you want it in your yard, how you want it to cast shade, what the tree is going to look like throughout the year. But you also want to consider the practicality of things such as overhead power lines and underground utilities. To find underground utilities, you call a free service called Before You Dig or 811 a few days before you're ready to plant your tree. They'll come out and mark really important things such as underground power lines, sewer, and gas lines so that you know that when you put your tree in the yard, it's, you're not going to hit those things when you're digging. And as the tree grows, it's going to be clear of those utilities. So today, we're going to plant this red oak here at the historic entrance to Cherokee Park. I have a nice big open space. There's no power lines. There's no encroaching trees. And this large canopy species, which is native to this region and will be very happy here, will be able to grow and have a long life as a very large tree in this spot. We want to plant native trees because they're more resilient in our ecosystems. They won't invade our woodlands and they'll provide habitat and food for our native wildlife. So this tree has twine and things from when it was moved from the nursery. We want to take that off before we put it in the hole. When I'm moving this tree, I want to move the root ball, not crank on the trunk. I don't want to cause any damage. So I'm going to lay it down nice and careful so I can cut this stuff off. And look for any broken branches that might need to be pruned. This tree looks great. So we want to figure out how big to dig this hole. It's going to be twice as wide as this root ball, but only as deep as the root system. I don't know how deep this needs to be until I find the root flare. So that's what we're going to do next. So this is a bald and burlapped tree. It was cut out of the ground at the nursery and its surrounding roots were severed and it was put into this steel cage with burlap wrapped around it. We're not quite sure how this was dug, and there's a chance that soil was deposited on top, but I want to find that really crucial point where the trunk stops and the roots start, because that's where this tree considers itself to be at, at ground level, and that's how I want it to be in the hole. So I'm going to take off the top of this burlap and excavate and find my root flare. Now you want to be careful the burlap is held on in different ways. It could be staples like this, and it could be nails, but that's why I've got my gloves and my safety glasses on. So now I can see where the soil meets the trunk, and I'm going to dig really carefully because I want to find either some lateral roots or a clear point where the trunk is really swelled and is sloping out towards the root system. That's my, tr my root flare. Another thing that I'm looking for here is girdling roots, so lateral roots that are growing around the trunk. I actually don't see anything bad here. I start to see the swell of my root flare, and I can see little feeder roots, little lateral roots. That tells me that I'm in the root zone. So this is about the level that I want my tree planted at. Okay, so now I know my depth because I found my root flare. Again, my hole is going to be as twice as wide as my root ball, and I'm going to dig a nice bowl-shaped hole. I just like to use the tools that I have on hand to find my measurements. So I know that my root ball is about this wide, 
this is the center of my hole. So if I want to find my total width, I can measure it like this. So I know that this is going to be the edge of my hole. Just measure in four cardinal directions, all the way around your central point, to get the ultimate width of your hole. So now that I've got my four points, I'm going to connect the dot and cut this side. Then I'll cut the sod out in strips and save it to the side. We'll use everything later, save all your sod and all your soil. So I've cut a circle in my sod that's as big as my planting hole is going to be. And now I'm going to take up the sod in strips with my flat bottom spade. Simply cut across and then get nice and low horizontal and sever the roots. I've got this tarp here so that I can keep my sod in one place and my nice soil in another and that keeps my work site really clean. So I've removed my sod which means I've gotten rid of some weed competition for my new tree and I'm ready to start digging my hole. I'll put my soil on my tarp or you can put it in a bucket and my buddy Greg's gonna help. Great, so now we're approaching our depth. We just wanna do some measurements so we know that our hole is just the size that we need it to be. Use something flat to find your ground level and then use the tools you have on hand to measure the depth of your root ball. So Greg's gonna find where the root flare would match on that shovel and then bring it over to our straight line to see. Looks good. So now we're ready to put our tree into our bowl shaped hole. It's only as deep as the root ball, but it's nice and wide for the, the feeder roots that are gonna grow out into our nice soft soil. So I've got my hole at the right depth and I'm ready to put my tree in it. I wanna take off this cage and burlap completely. So with my wire cutters, I'm gonna cut off the bottom part of this cage. We cut the bottom of the cage off first before we move the tree because once the tree's in the hole, we wouldn't be able to remove that part of the cage. So now that I've got the bottom out of the way, I'm gonna need some help to roll this tree into the hole. So we're gonna work together and steer this tree into the hole. I'm gonna support it so it doesn't drop too quickly. So now I'm going to carefully cut the rest of the cage away and then we'll remove the burlap. Just cut the lateral supports as they go down and free the whole thing up and then you can pull it up out of the hole. This is why it's really important to have gloves and safety glasses for stuff like this. So we want to get the cage out of the way so that it doesn't impede root growth. And we want to remove the burlap for the same reason. It's a good idea to go ahead and fold this up so that you don't step on it or cut yourself later. So now we're going to cut the burlap off. This tree is at the right depth and it's ready to go. I'm going to cut all around the base and then pull this upper part off of it. So we're going to take off this protective cover and these tags so we can see our trunk and we can get it nice and straight before we finish planting our tree. Your tree could have lots of various shapes up top, but we're going to kind of get an average from say your knees to your shoulders. Look at that range and compare the trunk to the edge of preferably a man-made structure like the corner of your house or a chimney or a steeple and look at it and get it lined up that way. Again, we want to manipulate the tree using the root ball and not the trunk. You can see that the soil is kind of loose so as we straighten it I can use a tool underneath the root ball and lever the tree that way. So now that my tree is straight, I'm going to get a nice tamp around the bottom of the ball so that it's nice and solid 
and then we're going to add a few inches of soil at a time and tamp it down with our fists. So use your hands to get your loose soil up against the root ball so that it has nice contact all the way around. So now I've got my soil back in place. I'm going to pull it away from my trunk. I don't want any mulch or soil against the trunk of my tree. But I can use my excess soil and my sod to make a berm right on the perimeter of the edge of the hole. This will help direct irrigation water and rainwater down into my root zone. And if there's any settling in this hole, this soil can come down and fill the gaps. Last but not least, we're going to add mulch to cover up all this soil. And we want to follow a simple rule of 3-3-3. Three, three, three. We want our mulch ring to be 3 feet wide. We want our mulch to be 3 inches from the trunk. And we want it to be about 3 inches thick. This is going to help to insulate the roots in the hot summer months. It'll in, uh, keep weeds from growing and it'll work as a slow release fertilizer for this root zone. So we've got the right tree in the right place at the right time of year. It's dormant now, but it'll leaf out in the spring with its neighbors and it'll have a smooth transition into its new home because we've taken all those, those steps to make sure that it's going to not just survive, but thrive here in Willow Park. Visit us at olmsteadparks.org. You can find out about volunteer events to learn more of this stuff hands-on and other ways to get involved.